Now let us begin with amplification, attenuation and filter. So as we know signal conditioning system has three important functions. Those are amplification, attenuation and filtering. So therefore let us begin with amplification. So this word amplification is uh, very familiar with you as uh, you have studied this amplification and different types of amplifiers in lower semesters in the subjects like analog electronic circuits and uh, basic electronics and all. So let us once again revise this amplification and about amplifiers. So an amplifier is a device which is used to increase the signal level or it is used to augment the weak signal. So amplification means increasing the level of signal. So an amplifier may operate on a different principle and accordingly there are different types of amplifiers. So like there are mechanical amplifiers, optical amplifiers, pneumatic and hydraulic amplifiers and electrical and electronic amplifiers. In case of amplifiers, the ratio of output signal to input signal is called as amplification gain or magnification gain. So the gain of amplification is expressed as G is equal to I0 divided by II. So here I0 is the output signal and II is the input signal. Since uh, this I0 and II both are in the same unit, so this gain is dimensionless quantity. In order to get greater value of amplification, two or more than two amplifiers must be connected in series so that overall gain of overall amplification gain of the system may increase that is given by the product of individual gains of amplifying units so as given by this equation. So now on the basis of uh, principle of working there are different types of amplifiers. Mechanical amplifiers, fluid amplifiers, optical amplifiers and electrical and electronics amplifiers. So in this section we are going to study about these different types of amplifiers. Now let us say mechanical amplifiers. There are two types of mechanical amplifiers. First one simple and compound levers and the second one simple and compound gears. These two are very common mechanical amplifiers. The compound lever has two or more levers which are linked together so that the output of one lever acts as input to the another lever. A very common example for a simple lever is the locking system which we commonly use in which there is a key and there is a lock so where we can find the lever system. When we apply a force to a key in order to lock it that force is amplified and the second one that is simple and compound gears is also a very common type of uh, mechanical amplifier. The example for simple and compound gears is the gear trains used for the magnification of displacement in the Borden tube pressure gauge and in the dial test indicator where linear moment is translated into rotation by means of rack and pinion. Even though the mechanical amplifiers are very commonly used but they have got certain limitations which are internal loading, friction at the mating parts and elastic deformation. So because of uh, internal loading, the mechanical amplif amplifiers may get damaged and also there will be a continuous friction at the moving parts. So because of which the amplification gain will be less in case of mechanical amplifiers. And with the passage of time, these mechanical amplifiers will get, will, will get deformed. 
Now let us see fluid amplifiers. There are two types of fluid amplifiers, hydraulic amplifier and pneumatic amplifier. Now the principle of these two amplifiers already we have discussed in hydraulic transducer and pneumatic transducer. The working of these hydraulic amplifiers and pneumatic amplifiers is similar to that of hydraulic transducers and pneumatic transducers. In case of hydraulic amplifier, when we apply a small displacement is applied to a piston, then the liquid present in the cylinder is displaced with a large value. Similarly, in case of pneumatic amplifier, instead of uh, liquid, we use air. So, with the small displacement of the piston, so there will be uh, there will be increase in the force of air at the output side. So, let us see now optical amplifiers. In these optical amplifiers, a ray of light strikes a mirror with an angle of incidence i and it gets reflected with an angle of reflection which is equal to the angle of incidence. Now when the mirror rotates through an angle say uh, theta, the angle of incidence now changes to i plus theta. Before rotation of the mirror the angle between the incident and reflected ray is 2i and after rotation it becomes uh, 2i plus theta, 2 into i plus theta. Obviously, there is an angular magnification of 2 theta between the incident and reflected rays. So, in order to get a greater magnification, more number of uh, such mirror surfaces may be used. Now, let us discuss about electrical and electronic amplifiers. These electrical and electronic amplifiers are used to increase the magnitude of voltage and current signals. These electrical and electronic amplifiers must have certain ideal characteristics. They are first one infinite gain. The amplification gain of these amplifiers must be very high. So there should be there should be infinite gain. And second one infinite input impedance. So the input impedance of these amplifiers must be very high and zero output impedance. The output impedance must be zero. Instant response. The frequency response should be very high. Zero output for zero input. So whenever there is no input signal to the amplifier, the output signal must be zero. And the ability to ignore or reject extraneous inputs. However, it is not possible to achieve these ideal characteristics for any of the amplifier but it is possible to approach these ideal characteristics. Now here let us see the expressions for different types of gains in case of amplifiers. Now suppose if Vi is the input voltage, Ii is the input current, V0 is the output voltage and I0 is the output current. So gain is equal to output power divided by input power that is V0 into I0 divided by VI into I. Voltage amplification is given by output voltage divided by input voltage V0 by VI and current amplification is given by output current divided by input current that is I0 divided by I. Similarly, the expression for power gain can be expressed in terms of decibel. So the common logarithm that is log to the base 10 of power gain is known as bell power gain. So power gain is equal to log to the base 10 of P0 divided by Pi bell. And we have one bell is equal to 10 dB. So power gain is equal to 10 log to the base 10 of P0 divided by Pi dB. If the two powers are developed in the same resistance or equal resistance, then Pi is equal to V square by R or I square into R and P0 is equal to V0 square by R which is equal to I0 square into R. So voltage gain can be expressed as 10 
log v not square by r divided by v i square divided by r. So that is 20 log to the base 10 of v not by v i db. Similarly, current gain can be expressed as 10 log of i not square divided by i i square into r, which is equal to 20 log i not by i i db. Now let us see the types of amplifiers. So basically we have two types of amplifiers based on the type of supply that is AC amplifiers and DC amplifiers. So next let us say modulated and unmodulated signals. So sometimes the measurement, the quantity which is to be measured may be pure in the form. That means it is a pure analog electrical signal. So in order to transmit the signal, sometimes it is required to modulate the input analog signal. That is the signal may be mixed with a high frequency or low frequency carrier. So in case of modulation, the major end affects the carrier by varying either its amplitude or its frequency. In the first case, the carrier frequency is held constant and its amplitude is varied by the quantity to be measured and this process is known as amplitude modulation that is AM. Now in the second case, the carrier amplitude is held constant and its frequency is varied by the major and this process is known as frequency modulation or FM. So now uh, the main important applications of uh, AM and FM transfer of signals is in AM and FM radio broadcasting. So very commonly amplitude modulation is used in the process of modulation. So let us see amplitude modulation in detail in the subsequent chapters. Now let us see ICs that are integrated circuits. Integrated circuits are the groups of circuit elements combined to perform some specific functions or specific tasks. So some of the common elements which are used in uh, ICs are transistors, diodes, resistors and uh, sometimes capacitors. So there are many complex circuits which uh, uses ICs such as differential amplifiers, mixers, timers, filters uh, and so on. So there are various circuits and almost all the circuits, electronic circuits uses one or the other ICs. Now let us discuss about operational amplifiers. An operational amplifier is a linear integrated circuit that has very high voltage gain and a high input impedance and a very low output impedance. This operational amplifier is called as operational because it performs many mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, integration, differentiation and so on. So that is why it is called as operational amplifier and uh, more commonly it is called as op-amp. So now these operational amplifiers are linear ICs that work on relatively low supply voltage and they are reliable and very inexpensive. An ideal op-amp is a device which has infinite voltage gain and infinite input impedance and zero output impedance. So this op-amp contains many transistors, resistors and few capacitors. Some examples, common examples of op-amp are uh, mu A709, LM108, LM208 and so on. Now let us see the specifications or characteristics of an op-amp. So uh, these are few characteristics of uh, op-amp. The first one input offset voltage. So it is the voltage that must be applied at the input terminals to make the output voltage zero. 
second one input offset current it is the net difference in the current between the two terminals input terminals so that must be applied across the input terminals to make the output voltage zero third one input check current so it is the average of the two input currents to make the voltage zero to make the output voltage zero then fourth one slew rate it is the maximum rate at which the output can change so the slew rate is expressed in volt per microseconds then fifth one unity gain frequency so this is the frequency at which the open loop gain of the amplifier becomes unity and the last one which is an important one here common mode rejection ratio cmrr so it is uh, the ratio of uh, desired signal to undesired signals so now let us see the applications of op-amp these op-amps are used in many circuits like amplifiers integrators summers differentiators comparators a to d and d to a converters active filters sample and hold amplifiers and so on so in the next section we will discuss uh, these uh, circuits in detail now let us see op-amp description so these are the two symbols which are commonly used for operational amplifiers so here one input terminal is designated by negative sign and it is called as inverting end and the another input terminal is designated with positive sign and it is called as non-inverting end so these uh, positive and negative polarities indicate only phase reversal it doesn't mean that v1 and v2 are negative and positive voltages so here the voltages the output and input voltages are measured with respect to ground a common ground so in this case the output voltage v0 is measured across uh, the output terminal and this output voltage is the product of gain and the input voltage difference v0 is equal to g into v plus minus v minus so even though op amp is having high voltage gain high input impedance and very low output impedance op amp has got certain limitations so let us see the limitations of op amp see op amps have non ideal characteristics for example when both the inputs are grounded ideally the output should be zero but when both the out inputs grounded the residual output voltage remains in case of practical op amp op amp output reaches zero at some non zero input voltage which is undesired and practically op amps have low value of common mode rejection ratio so ideally the cmrr should be very high then op amps undergo thermal drift that means both internal and external circuit elements may be temperature sensitive so because of which there will be thermal drift in case of practical op amp let us see the applications of op amp so operational amplifiers as uh, we discussed in the previous part they are used as the basic components in linear voltage amplifiers differential amplifiers integrators and differentiators voltage comparators function generators filters impedance transformers and in many other devices and op amp circuits are used in instrumentation system in case of inverter adder subtractor multiplier and divider integrator differentiator buffer amplifier and differential amplifier now let us discuss about attenuators and filters an attenuator is a two port resistive network and is used to reduce the signal level by a given certain amount there are different types of attenuators such as resistance attenuator symmetrical t attenuator l type attenuator and pi type attenuator now let us see filter 
so filtering is a process of removing unwanted signals and permitting the desired signals to pass so on the basis of uh, passing and attenuating of frequencies filters are classified into four types low pass filters high pass filters band pass filters and band stop filters so low pass filters are uh, those filters which pass only low frequency signals through them and that rejects all higher frequencies above some cutoff frequency a low pass filter is also called as a lag network now high pass filters these high pass filters are those filters which pass only high frequencies through them and which reject all low frequency signals below the cutoff frequencies then these high pass filters are called as lead networks now let us see band pass filters so these are those filters which pass a band of frequencies through them and which reject all other frequencies to pass through them now let us see band stop filters these filters are these filters reject a band of frequencies to pass through them and that allow all other frequencies to pass through them so these are the different types of filters